me and praise the Lord. If you can hear me on the Facebook Live, let me know that you can hear me on Facebook Live. I don't have my microphone today, so hopefully you all can hear me. Give me a thumbs up. See nothing, hear nothing. Somebody tell me if they can hear me on Facebook Live. I know there's only two people on, but can you hear me? Hear and see you. Praise God. Thank you, Sister Howard, because I was not sure. Hopefully, I'm loud enough because, again, I don't have my microphone. i got to figure out what happened to my adapter. It has somehow came up missing. Well, we're going to go ahead and jump right in. It's 7.02. I was going to wait a few minutes, but, you know, we might as well just jump right on in. Maybe we'll end a little bit earlier tonight. So, um Let's pray, Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you, O oh God, for allowing us to be here, allowing us to see this day, allowing us another opportunity to share your word um, with your people. God, we're asking that you would help me to decrease, that you may increase, O oh God, in the name of Jesus, and that your word will go out powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, O oh God, and that someone would ask, what must I do to be saved, God? In the name of Jesus, we pray, amen. All right, so we're going to go ahead and jump right into this. Um, I'm not going to come with anything really new. Um, the last time I spoke, we talked about uh, being stronger together, and so we're going to stick with that um, because I didn't really get to talk about everything that I had on the road out or whatever, so I'm going to try to talk about it a little bit more uh, about stronger together on it. This is the last Tuesday of the year, and we're grateful to even see this day, um, the last Tuesday of the year. Uh, because some people didn't make it. Um, some people didn't make it to see this last Tuesday of the year. But we're grateful to God for being able to be here and see the last Tuesday of the year. Thank God for that. Um, thank God that he, he also allowed uh, Kennedy, my God baby, to see her 10th birthday today. So that's a blessing as well. She was able to see 10 years old. Amen. God is good. So we're going to jump right into this thing, Stronger Together. I know that um, during our years of uh, 2020 and part of 2021, we were in kind of like isolation. We were not really together. We were, um, you know, if you live by yourself, you were kind of by yourself a lot. If you live with your family, you were kind of like with your family a lot. You weren't really with too many people. We weren't really going to... Uh, church. We weren't really, you know, coming together, gathering together, being together during 2020 and part of 2021. And so, um, and and all because of this virus that that came upon us here in the United States and all over the world. And uh, COVID-19 has really put a damper on things and changed the way we do stuff. Um, you know, the, the social distancing, the not really being able to hug people, um, to be sitting next to people, to be going to, uh, what's the word, uh, family gatherings and um, things like that, to be able to um, be with one another, you know what I mean? To kind of be together, to, to kind of draw strength from one another, to kind of do things together, to, you know, we, we kind of got away from that, um, because of 20, uh, because of this virus, right? So we're social distancing, you know, staying away from people, you know, instead of walking up, hugging people, we're giving people daps or elbows or whatever to keep our distance from folk. 
And we're really not, you know, all the way fully gathering together as we would normally do, right? Because normally we would be in service for longer than an hour. You know, we would have Sunday school at church. We would have three o'clock service at church. We would have, you know, different activities during the week at church. And 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 so because of this COVID-19 thing, we have... Um, kind of shied away or backed off of that type of stuff because of the fact uh, we can't really be together in one place for long periods of time, right? And so Stronger Together, um, even when I preached on it before, it's um, uh, it's hard to, to say, okay, we're going to be stronger together because for the last almost two years, we have been kind of separated apart. We haven't really been together. Um, you know, families haven't been able to come together as a whole family and really get together and have a good time with one another without being scared that someone's going to get uh, the virus or someone's going to spread the virus and, and we don't want to get anybody sick. But even in that, I believe that the Lord has... Um, did this for a reason to help us to understand that we do need each other, uh, help us understand that we, we, we are really collectively stronger together. And the enemy, his, his, his devices and what he tries to do is cause us to be isolated, cause us to be by ourselves, to get us by ourselves and, and to think that no one cares about you, no one loves you, no one's thinking about you, blah, 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 all those crazy things that the enemy tries to do. And and then we um, we find ourselves kind of like having a pity party. We're finding that in the last few years since 2020, we've had a lot of people with, that were depressed. Um, a lot of people have um, either children and adults have committed suicide. Um, we've had um, just so many things that have happened that have transpired. Right. We have all these, you know, husbands and wives divorcing been together for years and they're divorcing. We've had, you know, mothers and daughters falling out, um, sons and fathers falling out, just people just falling out, you know what I'm saying? And, and it's just really just a, a sad situation because this is the tactic of the enemy. The, the enemy wants us to separate, separate from each other. He wants to divide as a man, a man, minister Carolyn, divide and conquer too. He wants us to divide. He wants to divide us. He wants to separate us. He wants to cause us to, to not be able to be with one another, care for one another and do for one another because he understands the enemy understands that we are truly stronger together. We are truly stronger as um, together with each other in with one accord in the word of God, praying together, fasting together, seeking God together, all those things together. He understands that what, if we actually got together, if we actually got together, uh, and, 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 uh, in agreement and doing all the things that we're supposed to do together, uh, then he understands that his time is limited and he won't be able to get to us if we were together. See what the enemy tries to do. And I, I'm trying to, I'm trying not to get all the way ahead of myself because he wants to cause the separation and the divide because once the enemy can cause a separation and divide from uh, family or us or whoever you're connected to, once the enemy can, can can get that divide to happen, then you're covering almost, your, your covering is now lost. Like you have caused you to separate from the church, separate from your family, separate from whatever. Your covering is now lost and you didn't just went out there and now the enemy has full reign to do whatever he wants to do with you because you have walked away from your connection or your covering, so to speak. And so you therefore you don't have that ties, you don't have that connection. I can say for myself, like a lot of times when we're in church before all this happened, you know, we can be in church and, and the spirit can be really high. And then, you know, the Lord will uh, show you some things about some people or, or who needs to be ministered to or who's going through something. And, and the Lord will show you in the midst of, you praying and in the midst of whatever's going on in the in, in the service and the spirit is so high, the Lord will show you and you would get the opportunity to go over and minister to a per certain individual because we are there in the one place in the building together, gathered together. And the, the anointing of God is so high there in the building that the gifts of the spirit begin to work. 
And so because the gifts of the spirits begin to work, you're able to be utilized by God to go and minister to that person who is in need or who needs who needs that word of encouragement that the Lord gave you to give to them or they need somebody to touch and agree with them on a thing, lay hands on them with a certain situation or whatever the case may be. But now that we have this separation, right, even now in church, we're not really laying hands on people anymore, right? We're not even doing that. We do a whole community type of a prayer for the people and and that's it. But and and so it's like the enemy was trying to creep in even on that so that we couldn't allow the gifts of the spirit to truly work and move as God wants them to move. You know, it's hard to really have the gifts work if you're, you know, you're at home, I'm at home, they at home. I maybe I talk to you, maybe I won't talk to you. I mean, the good thing is that we do have like FaceTime or video calls or whatever, um, and we can kind of see each other, but Really, how many of us are really doing that? We're really, most of us aren't even really doing that. And so it's hard to have that connection. It's hard to have that bond or or that, that, that spiritual tie or where, you know, and I'm not saying that the Lord can't put you your, uh, you on the hearts of somebody or, or, or pray for somebody or tell somebody, you know, in their prior time, that, oh, you need to touch out or reach out to this person or touch her. I'm not saying he can't do it because he can do that. He can still work that way. But the truth of the matter is, it, it just depends on how many of us are really uh, spending the time in prayer and, 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 and fasting to get that type of connection with the Lord. Uh, it, it seems to be a little bit easier when you are in the house of God, in the building, in the church building, and we're all gathered there and the anointing is there and the spirits, uh, the 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 gifts of the spirit can work, you know, and, and so it, it's coming harder. And I've talked to a number of people and, 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 um, listening to them and, and they said the struggle is real. The struggle is hard, especially with how things are set up today. It's hard to focus. It's hard to get back to church. It's easier to just say, I'm going to watch it online. And then you watch it online. And then while you're watching it, you're on your couch. You're probably still watching TV. You're cooking dinner. You're doing all this other stuff while you're supposedly in, interacting and engaging with the service that's happening online. And and you're really not focusing on it. You're really not. And, and so then you, you, we're still getting this like separation. It's like we're still getting this kind of divide and, and we're not really being able to put our all into what we would normally put our all into when we were at the house of God. Not to say you can't get distracted at the house of God because you can do that as well. But I think when you're at home and you see the pile of laundry sitting there, it's easier for you to get up and do the laundry than to sit and focus on what's going on in Bible class or what's going on in in the church service, you know. And so that's why I think it's important for us to gather together as saints. And it's also important for us to stay kind of connected, stay connected and stay together. And so we in 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 the scripture that we that I spoke on in um November was Romans um, chapter number 15. And, and I did start with that. So I'm going to just start with that. Just, just one verse though. It says, we then that are strong ought to bear the infirmities of the weak and not to please ourselves. Verse two, let every one of us please his neighbor for his good to edification. I said one verse I'll read too. Um, and what made me think about that is being, uh, uh, the thing was stronger together. But when I heard that theme, I went automatically to um, Ecclesiastics chapter number four. And I want to talk about Ecclesiastics chapter number four. And um, verse number nine, and it says, two are better than one because they have good reward for their labor. For if they fall, the one will lift up this fellow. But woe to him that is alone when he falleth, for he hath not another to help him up. Again, if two lie together, then they have heat. But how can one bear be warm alone? And if one prevail against him, two shall withstand him. And a threefold cord is not quickly broken. And so that was um, Ecclesiastes chapter four, verses nine through 12. And so what I want to talk about is that when this, this is, it gets Solomon, he wrote, wrote this, which, you know, we know Solomon was one of the wisest men to ever live. And Solomon wrote this, and I think it's profound to understand that, he gave us four 
reasons why two are better than one. He gave us four. Now we can go through all the Bible where we can read and we can even start with Genesis, right? In Genesis, we can start at the beginning and it says it's not good for man to be alone, which is why God created Eve for Adam, because it says it's not good for man to be alone. And so it starts way in the book of Genesis where man should not be alone. And so we are thanking God that, you know, he did that and he recognizes, but it's isn't a shame that God knew that it wasn't good for man to be alone. But for some of us, we don't recognize that it's not good for us to be alone, right? Um, we get alone and we get isolated and we find ourselves having pity parties. We find ourselves then getting, um, getting weak, getting distracted, getting caught up in some things that maybe we shouldn't have because we are alone and isolated and aren't able to share with anyone else what's going on, aren't able to 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 speak whatever we need to speak or speak out. You know, we kind of internalize it and keep it in and then it starts to eat us up and then all this other stuff starts to happen. And so it's better for us to be together. So strong. When when we look at strong, we look at someone who is has faith, who prays, who fasts, who studies the word of God, who has a relationship with God, you know, all those different things. And then vice versa, when we look at somebody who's weak, they have no faith, no prayer life, they don't fast, they don't read the word, all these things, right? And they're double-minded, they're disobedient. You can start going on and on about a person that is weak. And so we could talk about the strong bearing the infirmities of the weak, but a lot of times we don't want to bear anybody else's burden. I mean, just being honest, just to keep it real, I can say that we don't want to bear anybody else's burden. And most of the time we don't because of the fact we feel like, you know, I got my own issues. I got all my own problems. I got my own stuff that I need to deal with. So I don't really want to bear anybody else's stuff. But it's the Bible tells us clear that we, the strong, ought to bear the infirmities of the weak. And so if we switch over to this Ecclesiastics, the four reasons why we are stronger together, this is the four reasons why, is because one, the first verse, nine, two are better than one because they have good reward um, for their labor, which means two people can accomplish more than if a person did it on their own, right? And I know you guys have 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 uh, put things together or did anything, you know, we can give the example of when we do the food bank, um, you know, if it was just one of us trying to get all that food up there to give out, it would take us forever to do it um, with the group that we have. It doesn't take us as long to get all that food up there bagged and ready to give out to the people because we have a group of people who can do it and we can get people in and out within. I think somebody timed in and said we get them in and out within a minute and a half or so. But if it was one individual trying to do that, it would probably take about five, 10 minutes or longer to get that individual food pack name written down taken to their car and then come back get the next person it would be a longer process if it was just one individual doing it versus five or ten individuals doing it so with together we can accomplish anything two people can accomplish more together than one and and that's what we have to understand we can do it all together better together more together, right? We can do it. But if we all want to be selfish and we want to do it our own way and we want to have it our own way, then we can't. The the second part is that we we have help, right? So for verse 10 says, for if they fall, the one will lift up his fellow, but woe to him that is lone when he falleth, for he have no one another to help him up. When you are together with somebody, you have somebody to help you get up. If you are by yourself, if you are alone and you fall in your house, you have no one there to help you pick, get you up. I know they have these new things now. They can push, the older people can push the button to get somebody to say, I've fallen and I can't get up, you know, and um, and, and that's a really good thing. But if they didn't have that and you fell, you didn't have a phone close by or whatever, you can't get yourself up as easily by yourself. And I know something about that because, uh, you know, for a while, I couldn't really get myself moving and doing a lot of things. I needed somebody to help me. I needed to to help to get up, help to go to the bathroom, help to take a bath, help help to do all kind of stuff. I couldn't do it on my own. And so it's a humbling thing. But the thing is, most of us don't want help. Right. We don't want help. We um, we our biggest problem is that we don't want help. Right. We say 
things like, oh, I can handle it. Um, I don't, um, I can do this all by myself. I don't need anybody. Um, I don't want anyone. I don't want anything from anybody. This and this, all the stuff we say. I'm not, I don't want to ask for help because then people think I'm weak. People think this and people think that. And, and so we want to, we make excuses. And so we don't want to get help or ask for help or whatever. Our pride gets in the way. We become, you know, we, we get so prideful that we scared to say, oh, I, I actually need some help with this thing. I'm having an issue. I'm having a struggle. I'm having whatever it is. And I, and I don't want to ask anybody, but, but here it says we have help. We can help one another, right? We are, we are helpers one to another, right? We, we can help each other, especially when we are in a bad spot or we don't know what to do or where to go. Um, then we, sometimes we deny reality, right? When we, we fall down, we often say it's okay. Uh, I got it. Or, or don't want to tell people, you know what? I fail. So you don't want to tell nobody you fail because then you don't want them looking at you crazy or start look, thinking something different about you. So you'd be like, no, I'm, I'm okay. I, I'm good. I'm fine. You know, I'm, I'm, I got it under control. Listen, and you don't, it's okay to ask for help because here we are able to help one another. If one falls, we can, pick the other one up. This is what we're here to do. This is what we're supposed to do is help one another, right? We don't want to be prideful, so prideful that we can't ask for help, so prideful that we can't say, you know, I'm in a bad situation or we can't say, you know what, my mind is wandering and it's making me feel like people don't love me, people don't like me or this and that and 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 get the help you need because see what the enemy wants to do is the enemy wants to take those thoughts. You know, I, I taught about a, a while back about captivating your thoughts. The enemy wants to take those thoughts that you're thinking in your head and make them to be truth when they're alive. And and so the enemy would take this stuff and, and make you feel like you're all alone and make you feel like you can't depend on anybody. You can't talk to anybody. People are looking at you strange. People are looking at you crazy or whatever the case may be. He'll take those thoughts and he'll start building on them to make you believe the lie that is being told to you. And then you will just like, oh, okay, you know, you start believing it. You start doing different things and moving certain ways, all because you starting to believe a lie. And we don't want you to believe a lie. So we want you to understand that we are here together. None of us are perfect. None of us have, have everything going on. None of us have it all together. All of us have our points and, and time and our moments in life where we are either uh we, we, we're sad, we're depressed, we're not sure where to go, what to do. We got some issues with our children, issues with our husbands, issues with marriage, issues with finances. Issues. We all have some point in time where we're dealing and struggling with some stuff and we need help. And there's nothing wrong with asking for help, especially if you're asking for the right person to help. There's nothing wrong with asking or saying, you know what, I need to seek a counselor. I have some anger issues. I have some issues from when I was growing up or some hurt. I have some pain. I have some whatever stuff that I'm dealing with and I need to speak to a counselor. I need to go to a therapist or or I need somebody that I can just uh, talk to. I don't need no answers, but I just need to be able to speak the stuff out that's on my chest that's in my heart that's that's whatever is bothering me whatever is going on I need to be able to speak that out because you can't hold the stuff in when you hold the stuff in what happens is you hold it in and eventually you're going to explode you're going to pop it's going to it's going to cause all kind of crazy problems but if you had somebody to open up to, had somebody to talk it out with, had somebody to help you give you some guidance, some biblical guidance and some direction. I'm not talking about nobody that's going to be your amen person and tell you, yeah, do this, you do, and it's outside of the will of God. No, somebody that is that is in the will of God that's going to pray with you, that's going to fast with you, that's going to, to say, you know, no, sister, this is not the way that you do that. No, sister, this is not the way that you handle that. You know, we got to seek God on this. We got to do this right. This is what we need. And that's why we are stronger together because of that. Because I can say, you know what? Hey, you know, first lady, you was wrong. You shouldn't have did such and such and such and such. And I'll be like, okay, you're right. Yep, yep. And and I know it's hard sometimes to say, you know what? I'm I, I'm wrong. I shouldn't have did that. I should have. But we got to be able to come together and we got to be able to work together to help iron out this other stuff that's going on. Because see, the enemy will use that stuff to cause division, cause us to attack one another, cause us not to like one another, cause us not to forgive one another, cause us to do all kinds of things that is not of God because of the division that the enemy is trying to cause. 
And so we have to really get ourselves together to try to become one, to try to become better together, right? And in Matthew um, chapter number 18, 19 through 20, it says, again, I say unto you that if two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything that they shall ask, it shall be done for them of my Father, which is in heaven. But where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. Here is what he's saying. This is one of my scriptures that I've been loving to read during this time. I've been loving to hear this uh, during this time. I, I don't know why. Every time I pray, I just the scripture just comes to me and it sticks with me. It stays with me because I truly believe what the word of God says, right? I believe it with all of my heart. And so this scripture is something that is so powerful. If we really understood the power of togetherness, the power, it says for where two or three are gathered in my name, there am I in the midst. Listen, to have God in the midst of whatever that is going on, whatever that is 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 uh, hindering you or causing you problems or grief or or pain or hurt or agony, whatever. He says, where two or three are gathered in my name. If you have two or three people who believe in God believe in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, believe that he, uh, Jesus was born and died on Calvary for our blood, believe in the baptism in the name of Jesus, believe in the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in tongues. If you have two or three people who believe that, my God, then you can come together. Jesus said he will be in the midst. He will be right there in the middle of whatever the issue, whatever the problem, whatever the struggle, whatever it is that's going on. He said he will be in the midst. So that's why stronger together, I'm talking about stronger together. Why is it so important? Because if two or three are together, Jesus said he will be in the midst. Don't you want Jesus in the midst of your trial and your situation and your problem and your issue? If he is in there, do you understand that there is nothing that cannot be done. You understand that he's going to be able to fix the problem. He's going to be able to change the situation. He's going to be able to change your thought process and your mind because two or three, he said, he's going to be in the midst. And then he said, if if two of you shall agree on earth, touching on anything, two or three agree, touching on anything. This is why I believe in prayer partners. This is why I believe that you should have somebody that you can pray with, somebody that can touch and agree with you on a certain situation, touch and agree with you on a a problem or a circumstance or whatever it is that you're dealing with. Because it says in Matthew 18, it says, if two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything that they shall ask, it shall be done for them of my father, which is in heaven. We have to start taking the word of God and we have have to start applying the word of God to what we're doing. I'm a firm believer that the, the word of God is what, is what moves God. The word of God is what moves him. And if we follow his instruction, if we follow his guidance, if we follow what the word of God is saying, then I believe that God will do what his word says. It says here, right here, if two of you shall agree on earth as in touching anything, whatever you shall ask. We have to be in agreement, though. See, we have to agree. The problem is, and, and I hate to say this, the problem is we're not in agreement. We we not. And and I, I, I don't like to say it, but we're not in agreement. We don't agree on anything. We don't agree on the baptism in Jesus' name. We don't agree in, 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 in speaking in tongues. We don't agree that Jesus is God. We don't agree that whether you should remarry after divorce. We don't agree whether, you know, you should whoop your children or you shouldn't whoop your children. We don't agree on whether you should be wearing uh, braids or not braids, whether you should cut your hair, you shouldn't cut your hair, whether you should have jewelry on or not, makeup on or not, or pants on or not, or whatever. We don't agree. And we wonder why we are not being able to see signs and wonders in the church and God is not moving as he should because of the fact that we do not agree. The devil is doing an awesome job of causing division, not just in the church. He's causing division in the homes. He's causing division at the jobs. He's causing division with the children. He's causing division. He is doing a 
good job of what he is set out to do. And we, the saints of God, are not looking at the fact that we need to be in agreement. We need to be unified. We need to do what the word of God has told us to do. If we follow the thing of the word of God, if we follow the scripture, if we follow what it says, then we will be so much stronger together. We can look at the Hebrew boys. When they went into the fire, they said they were not going to bow down to Nebuchadnezzar. It was three of them. Remember my scripture? I just said it was three of them and they all agreed they will not bow down to any other gods. They agreed they will not bow down to any other gods. And they did not. And they got thrown in the fiery furnace. And when they got into the fiery furnace, what happened? I Listen, I just read it. It says, and again, I say unto you that if two of you shall agree on earth touching anything, they shall ask, and it shall be done for them. And it says, for where two or three are gathered together in my name, there I am going to be in the midst. The three Hebrew boys, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they went into the fiery furnace. Three of them went in. And then it says they looked in and said, there is a fourth that looks at the son of man. My God, didn't I just read that he said where two or three are gathered in his name, that he would be in the midst. And so here we have Jesus there in the midst in the fire with the Hebrew boys because they believed on God. They knew what they was doing. They did not bow down to Nebuchadnezzar. They did not bow down to anybody else. They worshiped the one and true and living God. And they said, "For this is who I'm going to worship. If God don't deliver me, we know that he can. They believed that. And so what happened? Jesus got into the midst of their situation, midst of the fire. He was in the fire walking around with them. My God, right there, he was in the fire walking with them in the midst. So we have to really believe what the word of God is saying to us. We have to believe it. We have to walk it. We have to talk it. We have to live it. We got to believe that he's there in the midst. We got to believe it. And then we have we can go to the day of Pentecost where we can talk about uh, Acts and two and one. It says on the day of Pentecost was fully come. They were all with one accord in one place. Again, they were together. They were following the instructions. They were following the instructions that they were supposed to follow to go and wait to be endued with power. They were following the instructions and they were all there and they were with one accord in one place. And what happened? What happened when they were in one accord with one place together? The Holy Ghost came down, right? The Holy Ghost fell on everybody that was in there. The Holy Ghost fell. And so we have to be careful. We got to really get into this word of God, see the enemy and understand. Listen, understand that the enemy wants to cause division. The enemy wants to cause separation. The enemy wants you to not like your brother. The enemy wants you to not like your sister. The enemy wants you to not like your pastor. The enemy wants you to not like your ministers. The enemy wants you to not like your church. The enemy wants you to cause to cause problems and divisions and the issues. The enemy comes to kill, steal, and to destroy. The enemy cares nothing about you. He doesn't want you to make it to heaven, a place where he has already been. And so he's going to do every tactic, pull out everything without any stopping to get you to fall, to get you to quit, to get you to turn your back on God, to get you to turn your back on the people who are praying for you, who are lifting you up when you are down, to get you to do that. This is what the enemy wants you to do. He wants you to give up. He wants you to quit. He wants you to think that you're in this all by yourself. He wants you to think that you have nowhere else to go, nowhere else to turn. He wants you to think that you can't do this, but understanding that this is what God, God wants us to be together. God wants us to be able to come together in prayer and 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 pray and until until deliverance takes place. He wants us to be able to pray until chains fall us, falls off. He wants us to be able to pray until the, the sick are healed. He wants us to be able to pray until those that need the Holy Ghost will get it. He wants Wants us to be able to pray and and really seek God on behalf of others and and really be able to 
lift them up when they need to be lifted up. You know, this is what God really wants us to do. This is salvation is not, I know we say save yourself. I, the word of God says save yourself. But sometimes it's not just about saving yourself. Sometimes it's about reaching back and pulling somebody out of the muck and the miry clay that they're in. Sometimes it's about reaching back and speaking a good word to somebody of encouragement to, to encourage them. I know that David said in that he had to encourage himself in the world, in the Lord, because sometimes people won't encourage you. But if you're not strong enough, and if you're not uh, 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 strong enough in the word of God to be able to get the word of God and pull it back to you to encourage yourself, sometimes you need somebody else to encourage you. And there's nothing wrong with somebody else to encourage you. It's okay if you're strong enough to encourage yourself. Listen, because I've had to encourage myself a few times, but the only reason why I can do that is because of the Holy Ghost and the word of God that I have down on the inside of me. See, because when you have the Holy Ghost down on the inside of you, the Holy Ghost will bring all things back to your remembrance. That's what the word says. And so when it, when I get to a point and to a place where there's something that's going on that's bothering me, see, the word will begin to minister into me and the word will start to come out because that's what I feed myself. And so the word will start coming out and I can encourage myself, you know, but there's others who don't have that. And therefore we have to embed the infirmities of the weak. So those that are strong, that got the word down on the inside, we need to be able to speak the word and encourage the folk that don't have it, encourage the folk that need help, encourage the folk that whatever is going on, this is what we need to do. And so this is how what we have to do. We have to encourage one another. We have to really set ourselves aside and really get down so that we can be stronger together. We can really we can get so close together and be together and so knitted together in love that the enemy can't come in and cause a divide. The enemy can't come in and cause a separation. Because see, what happens is the enemy will come in and you together, right? You 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 together, and then all of a sudden, as you begin to walk together, stuff starts to happen happen, right? Your feelings get hurt. Your emotions start to bother you or, or, or there's some type of disagreement or an argument. And as you're doing that, you're together. But as the disagreement happens, you begin to separate. As the hurt feelings come, you begin to separate. As the things begin to happen with your finances or your mindset, you begin to separate. And so when you begin to separate, what happens is you once you separate, now there is a gap here. There's a gap that's happening and in the gap you can allow the enemy can come straight in between that gap and then what the enemy does is he tries to pull it even further apart because the more the further further away you get the harder it is for you to come back together right so the enemy comes in to try to destroy that togetherness that we have the bond that we have the enemy tries to come in and destroy the bond the connection he tries to come in and destroy it because he understands if he can get you out here by yourself <laughs> if he can get you out here by yourself and ain't nobody thinking about you ain't nobody praying for you ain't nobody worried about you the, the enemy got you he got you he gonna have you and so we don't want the enemy to come in and cause the separation and cause the division right it's he because he coming in he's seeking whom he may devour he's seeking it he wants to kill steal and destroy the enemy wants to cause confusion he wants to cause delusions he wants to call this he wants to cause separation from you from, amen brother anthony he wants to cause separation from you from the love of god but we know in romans 8 that nothing can separate us from the love of god nothing can separate us from the love of god that's what the word of God says. But but the enemy wants to cause a separation. He wants to cause a divide because if he can get you out there by yourself to get you to conform to the world, get you to compromise, Get you to get out of what you are taught. Get you to get out of what you know is right. To get you to be disobedient. To get you to start lying and cheating. To get you to get out of the will of God he has won. The enemy has won. And that's what his choice, that's what he wants to do. The enemy wants to get us out of the will of God. The enemy wants to take us away and separate us from God. And then separate us from the people who are praying for us. Separate us from the people who are holding up our arms when we are weak. Separate us from the people, the very people who tell us the truth when we are wrong. To separate us from the very people who, who love us enough to tell us the truth 
to separate us from that. And that's what the enemy wants to do. He wants us to be separated from the folks that's going to tell you the truth. You know, he wants you to be with the people that's going to tell you, oh, yeah, ain't nothing wrong with that. Oh, yeah, you can keep doing that. Oh, yeah, ain't nothing wrong with that. You can do it. You can do it. No, the devil is a lie. You can't do, you can't live how you want to live and be with God, right? No, the word of God says present your body as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. We have to really be separated. We cannot do the things of the world. We cannot act like the world. We cannot talk like the world. We cannot look like the world. We cannot do those things. We have to do what God has instructed us to do. We have to believe in God and we have to understand that we cannot just be agreeing on anything. The other thing is that we can walk in harmony in a lie. We can walk in the lie. What, uh, what do I mean by that? What I mean is that you can know it's a lie. You can know that somebody lying and you're going to agree with the lie. No, the devil is a lie. You don't agree with a lie because the lie will get you in trouble. The lie will get you uh, in a place that you don't want to be. So we have to be careful in what we in agreeing with. If it's not the truth, which is God, if it's not the truth, then we have to be careful that we don't agree with a lie, people of God. We cannot agree with a lie. And what I mean by that, and you can read about it in Acts 5, 1 through 10 with Ananias and Sapphira. What did they say? I'm going to read just a little bit of it because I, I want y'all to believe me. You cannot believe and cannot agree with a lie. I don't care who's telling you to lie. You better not lie. The Bible says that every lie should have their part in the lake. You don't want to do that. You don't want to be lying. It says, but Acts 5, uh, chapter, Acts chapter 5, and it says, but a certain man named Ananias with Sapphira, his wife, sold a possession and kept back part of the price, his wife also being pri privy to it, privy to it, and bought a certain part and laid it at the apostles' feet. But Peter said, Ananias, why has Satan filled thine heart to lie to the Holy Ghost and to keep back part of the price of the land? While it remained, was it not thine own? And after it was sold, was it not thine own power? Why hast thou conceived this thing in thy heart that thou hast not lied unto men, but unto God? And Ananias, hearing these words, fell down and gave up the ghost and great fear came on all of them that heard these things. And the young men arose, arose, wound him up and carried him out and buried him. And, and it was about the space of three hours after when his wife, not knowing what was done, came in. And Peter answered unto her, tell me whether you sold the land for so much. And she said, yea, for so much. Then Peter said unto her, how is it that ye have agreed together to tempt the spirit of the Lord? Behold, the feet of them which have buried thy husband are at the door and shall carry thee. Then fell she down straightway at his feet and yielded up the ghost. And the young men came in and found her dead and carried her forth, buried her by her husband. Again, what did I tell you? We were talking about a green. What did I say here in verse 9? It says, Then Peter said unto her, How is it that ye have agreed together to tempt the spirit of the Lord? We were talking about agreement. I told you, you can agree on a lie. And and then what was their penalty? Death. Because they agreed on a lie. Don't agree on the lie, y'all. Don't be agreeing with folk who ain't who ain't speaking the truth, who ain't telling the truth, who ain't following the truth. Don't agree on a lie. Y'all better not agree on a lie because the lie will get you killed. The lie will get you into a place that you don't want to be. Don't be just agreeing with folks to be agreeing with folks. You better know what you're agreeing on and what you're in agreement with. The agreement is the truth. You got to agree on the truth, which is God, not a lie not a lie, not what you want to be, what, but what God says, what thus says the Lord, what thus says the Lord, not a lie, because this is serious. This is not something that you want to play with. This is serious. This is a serious thing. You have to really understand. You can't agree on a lie. Don't be agreeing on lies. Don't be agreeing on stuff that's not of God. Don't be in agreement talking about, oh, we can, oh, Lord Jesus, the thing didn't went dead. Can you still hear me? I hope y'all can still hear me. I hope you can hear me. Can you hear me still? Cause I, I, my, my son's earpods. Just the uh, 
whatever these things are. Facebook, can you see it? My son's ear pods and died on me, Jesus. <laughs> okay, I hope you can, because listen, his ear pods and died. Jesus hit me. Okay, the lie. You can't agree on the lie, you know, because Ananias and Sapphira, that's what they did. They agreed on the lie, right? They 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 agreed on the lie. And and you cannot agree on the lie, people of God, uh, because it's gonna get you in trouble. I don't I don't care what anybody say. You know, I, I know a lot of people were sitting here talking about, oh, um, this is this new thing about, oh, well, you know, we're going to get married or whatever so we can go ahead and have sex. That's a lie. Don't believe that. You, you have to really stay together. Uh, and, and, and when I say agreeing on things, it's agreeing on the truth, the word of God, agreeing on what thus says the Lord, not what you want, not your feelings, not your emotions, not your stuff, not what you want to have, right? No, it's agreeing on what the Lord says that you're supposed to have and what you're supposed to be doing. And so here they clearly, a husband and wife clearly got together on a lie. And, and what happened to both of them? They died because they lied to the Holy Ghost. Don't lie to the Holy Ghost, y'all. Listen, I mean, I know some of us may not uh, be able to recognize a lie and hear it, but y'all don't, don't lie to the Holy Ghost. Don't lie to it because it's going to be some bad problems for you, some issues and some situations for you if you lie to the Holy Ghost. We want to be in agreement. We want to be together. And um, I can keep going on about what we need to do, right? And so we can talk about um, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and 10. It says, Now I beseech you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that ye all speak the same thing, and that there be no division among you, but that ye be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. We have to really be together. I talked about it before. We talking about we we we're not together on a whole lot of things. Our mindsets are not the, the same on a whole lot of stuff. But we have to be together. It says here that we have to speak the same thing, and and so that there is no division among us, right? We when we do the Lord's Supper and we read it, and He says when we start reading in and um, Corinthians, and He says, "I hear that there be division among you," and I partly believe it. But listen, I, Paul partly believe it, but I show sure believe it all the way. Because of the fact that we do have a lot of division among us. There's a lot of issues. There's a lot of people don't, do you know, they don't like you, don't like me, don't like what you're doing, don't like how you're saying, don't like how you're doing. It's a whole bunch of stuff that's causing division in the church. And we wonder why we cannot have the gifts of the spirit moving as they're supposed to move because it's so many division and so many hurt folk and so many folk that can't open, don't, don't want to stay and, and come to you and say, you know, you did me wrong, or I don't like the way you treated me, or I don't like the way you spoke to me or whatever. And then we hold on to it and we keep it and we cause resentment and bitterness to root up and spring up and, and all of this other stuff, instead of being able to come together and be able to speak the same thing, talk the same thing, live the same thing, preach the same thing, teach the same thing, walk the same thing. And we're not, we're not, we're not, we're not, because we have so many different people who believe so many different stuff. And then we're causing each other to call, to go against one another because we don't believe in what you believe. And so because you don't believe in this and I don't believe in that, then we got a problem. And because you believe in this more than I believe in this, then we got a problem. Listen, we shouldn't have these type of problems. We shouldn't have this kind of division. We shouldn't have this stuff going on amongst us in the church. As believers of God, we should be able to get along, right? We should be able to, as I said before, bear the infirmities of the week. We shouldn't be so strong-minded and so opinionated about our own stuff that we forget what the word of God says, right? We can't do that. Yes, minister, and to let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus. We have to. And so we have to really get ourselves together to do what is right, to do what we need to do in in God. What how much we have to really start to think. Are we thinking the same thing? Are we talking the same thing? Are we walking the same thing? Are we really using the word of God? Are we trying to line up our lives with the word of God? Or are we trying to do our own thing? See, I know that a lot of us take the word of God and we try to fit it towards our situation, fit it towards our circumstance, and fit it to where we need it to fit. But that's not how the word of God goes. No, we have to follow the word of God. God as the word of God is. And the word of God tells us exactly what we need to do. We need to speak the same thing, talk the same thing, think the same thing, walk the same thing, live the same thing. We have to do that because if we don't, then there's going to be room 
for the enemy to come in and cause division. The enemy is going to be able to come in and cause problems. He's going to be able to come in and turn us against one another. He's going to be able to come in and cause us to get walk away from each other, to talk about each other, to do all the things that we shouldn't be doing because the enemy we have allowed instead of this, right? Pastor Jones just said, we should be so tight together that the wind can't even come between us. We should be so tight together that when somebody comes to you talking about your Yo, yo, a member of the church or the church or your pastor or who, your first lady or deacon or whoever, then you should be able to say, no, we are so close together that no, you, I'm not going to allow you to plant a seed in my head about anybody, about my church, about the people of the church or whatever, because we're so knitted together in love. We're so close together that we are not allowing the enemy to come in to pry us apart, to pull us away from what God has put us where he has put us and we can be together. We can be strong. We can bind the enemy together. We can do all the things that we need to do together, together. If we are together and in agreement, listen, on the truth, not a lie, agreement on the truth, then God can move. The word of God is true. The word of God is true. He is going to be there in the midst. Of us, we can talk about uh, uh, the Paul and Silas and and in Acts 16 when they were in prison and you had Paul and Silas come together and they were in prison and they began to pray. They prayed and they sang praises unto God. Again, they were with one accord. It was two of them gathered in the name of Jesus. Do you understand, people of God, that when we are gathered together in the name of Jesus and we come together and we really want God to move, when we come together and we have blocked out all the other stuff, blocked out our own thinking and blocked out our own problems and our own situations, and we truly focus on praising the name of the Lord and, and giving God what is due him and doing what God has said to do in his word. Do you not know that the chains can be broken? Do you not know that people can be delivered? People can be released. People can be set free. People can be um, removed out of bondage. People can be healed. All those things can take place when we truly get together and really start to magnify and praise the Lord with one accord. You know, I know we're getting ready to have watch night service on Friday, but I understand, but, and, and, and I want to challenge you because we, we almost done with our time. I want to challenge you that when we go to watch night service on, um, on Friday, I know that we didn't have it last year. We did a virtual whatever, but when we go to watch night service, this is what I want to challenge you. And those that ain't watching it on, um, um, the Bible study. I know y'all call them and talk to them and I want you to call them and text them, talk to them or whatever, because what I want you to do is I want you to come into the, the, the watch night service. And I want us to do what Matthew 18, 19 and 20 say. I, I want us to be able to come in and it says, and again, I say to you that if two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything that they shall ask, it shall be done for you. Then of my father which is in heaven for where two or three are gathered together in my name there i am in the midst i want the lord to show up in in, in watch night i want the lord to show up and be in the midst of the service and i believe that if two or three and i know it's gonna be more than two or three of us there so we get more than two or three of us to really come into that watch night service and really come in there gathered together to truly lift up the name of jesus listen to really come there in the name of jesus now listen i know y'all got problems i know y'all got stuff y'all dealing with i know y'all got uh, issues and and all kind of stuff going on in your head and your mind and all this but understand me today I believe that if we can just come into that door on Friday night, my God, if we can come into the house of the Lord on Friday night together, we can all come in there together and we gather in the name of Jesus, not in my name, listen, not in nobody else's name, not in your name, but in the name of Jesus. See, I'm going to come in there because what I understand is, yes, we are stronger together and we didn't come in together on last year bringing in 2021 but this year in 2021 we're gonna come in together to bring in 2022 and i 
just believe today, y'all. I believe. And if I can get anybody else to agree and believe with me, all I need is two people, two other people to agree with me. If I can get to agree with me, to walk into that sanctuary on Friday night and really believe, gather there and leave your problems at home, leave your situation, your issue, your problem with whoever you got a problem with, leave all that at the door. Come in there and, and in the name of Jesus, agree in the name of Jesus. I just believe that deliverance and healing can take place on Friday night. I believe that we can get together and we can pray and we can sing praises like Paul and Silas and the chains will be broken and the people will be loose. The bands will be freed and the people will be set free. I believe that with all my heart, if we can go in there with the spirit of in the name of Jesus, in we're going to gather in the name of Jesus on Friday. I believe that together, corporately, we can be stronger together. I believe corporately that God will come in and God will tear down those strongholds, that God will come in and he can heal those that are sick, that God will come in and he will set the captive free, that God will come in and he will change your marriage, that he will change your circumstance, he will change your financial situation, he will change whatever is going on, but you've got to agree and believe that Jesus is going to be in the midst of that service and and you ain't going to come in there trying to be no play pretty and looking to see who's going to get what. No, it's not about nobody else. It's about you and worshiping the name of Jesus. Because listen, we did not have to make it through 2020. We did not have to make it through 2021. We don't even have to make it to see 2022. But if we come in the name of Jesus up in that building, believing God for whatever it is that you need, believing God for whatever is going on in your life that you need him to fix, I believe today that God will do it. He he will answer. He will hear us. He will, oh, he will come down and change. And when you walk up out of that church on 20, on um, January 1st, 2022, it will be something different that you never had before because you ex experience the touching and agreeing. You experience the gathering together and agreeing. We ain't worried about who got this on and who do. No, we're going to touch and agree on Jesus. That's it. I don't need you to touch and agree on nothing else. Just Jesus. Touch and agree on Jesus, who he is, that he came and he died and, and he forgave us for our sins, that he came and he died on that cross and he suffered for your sins and my sins. Just agree on Jesus. And I tell you, it will be so, listen, it will make you, oh my God, I'm going to tell you, the spirit of God will come in like never before. And so I just want you to be ready. I want you to come in and just think on Jesus, come in and worship Jesus, come in and let's lift up Jesus on high because Jesus is the one that can heal. Jesus is the one that's going to deliver. Jesus is the one that's going to set us free. But you've got to come in and be ready to worship the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It's not about nobody else. It's about Jesus. It's about giving him what is due and he will show up in the midst, people of God. He will show up for us. We just have to come collectively together, stronger together, stronger, stronger with our belief, stronger in knowing who he is, stronger in knowing what God can do, stronger in knowing that, God, I need you and I don't need all this other stuff, but God, I need you to do it. And if we can do that, if we can believe that Jesus is the way, Jesus is the only way, Jesus is the answer, and we can come in there together and gather together, I tell you, the Lord, the anointing will be so high. Jesus will move on the folk that don't that that didn't even think that Jesus was real. He will start to move. He will move on your circumstance, your situation, your problems. He will move. He will change your heart. He will change your mind. He will change it. He will help you get through whatever you're dealing with. He will help you, but you just got to come. So on watch night, come lift up Jesus with me. Come and lift up Jesus. I'm going to tell you, I ain't going to be worried about you and what you got. I'm going to get me two or three. I, I And I, I know my two or three going to be there and they're going to be ready. I ain't even going to tell y'all who they are. But the two or three that I know are going to be ready. And we're going to lift up Jesus. We're going to lift up Jesus because I believe his word tells me. And he going to do it. He going to do exactly what he said. Let me pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, help us tonight, God. Lord, let us not this word fall on deaf ears, God. Lord, help us to understand that we are stronger together, that we are helpers one to another, and that we need each other. 
God, in the name of Jesus. And so, God, we're asking that you would touch us by people tonight, God. Lord, help us understand that we truly need each other and that if we gather together in your name, that you will truly be in the midst. So, God, we're asking that you help us to get ourselves together. Help us to get where we need to be. Oh, God, that you will show up in the midst on Friday night doing our watch night service, God. In the name of Jesus and that healing and deliverance, oh, God, will take place. And God will give your name the glory and the praise. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you, people of God. I hope you be ready on Friday night to give God what is due him for the whole year that we have been here. Come be ready to give God whatever it is that he, he's owed and he's due. Listen, he's owed, he's due so much. And we ain't even gave him half of what we can pay him for, for what he's done. So let's come ready to give God all the glory, all of the honor, everything that he is worthy of. Join us for prayer tonight is on at eight o'clock one seven two zero six five zero thirty thirty pin number is three one five two one one four pound god bless you people of god if i don't see you happy new year and god bless you